user variables in FrameMaker are extremely powerful and easy to use. The text that you see in front of you, which is red, um, is an instance of a user variable. And the way I can tell it's a user variable is I cannot get an insertion point. For instance, I can insert in memorandum and select part of the text, but any of this text which I've deliberately made red is called a user variable. One way to view all of our user variables is by turning on a pod for variables. As I do this, this opens up a collapsing pod from the bottom. Any of the variables that have a little purple um, indicator in front of them are system variables primarily used on the master page. We're going to deal with some four user variables that I've defined on the bottom. You can see here that I've got client, company, contractor, and let's see how we can use these different ways. Um, I can say that um, the company, and here I'd like to put the company uh, um, variable in so I can simply insert it, um, is going to work with, and here I want the client. Now if I press control zero, that actually brings up a pop-up menu which I can select client from. So we'll just go ahead and close variables right now. Uh, on the, and here I want the product name for the project. So um, that, act, that actually happens to be down at the bottom off the screen. I'll go ahead and click on that. Um, with the and here I'm going to go with the contractor. Now you also can hit C until you get to the contractor, wherever that is, and they happen to be down at the bottom again, and I'll go ahead and click them. It's eclipsed by the screen so you cannot see it. So it's actually very easy to enter them. Now um, it's also very easy to change a variable as well. So for instance if I go into the variable, and I'll just do a quick example here, let me go ahead and change the name of the client. Right now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, right now we have client defined as client A. If I wanted to uh, redefine this, I can simply bring up the definition of the client. And I could put my own name and make Maxwell Hoffman be the client. So I'm going to edit that. And notice the moment that I do that, everything's gone back to normal. Now what I'd like to do is just go ahead and do an edit undo or Another thing I can do is the basis of our demonstration today, which is how to use templates with um, variables. So what we're going to do is to actually import a template to change the definitions of our variables. And we're going to do this three different times to show how we could actually use these variables three different ways. Let's take a look at our templates. Um, these templates are not intended to change the entire look and feel of the document. All they have in them is character tags, a character tag definition, and then they also have the variable definitions. Now this one has the original definitions I was dealing with. Notice that the client is defined as client A instead of Maxwell Hoffman. So if I go back in here and I want all of the Maxwell Hoffmans to change, I can simply say that I want to import um, the definitions of the character tags and the variables from that template we just looked at. Voila, a second later it's all changed to client A. Let's go look at our other templates. I have template 1 and I have template uh, 2 and I also have template uh, 3. So if we go into template 1, we'll see that um, this actually drops in actual names instead of that placeholder text and it gets rid of the red. But notice that it's still in sort of a courier style so that we, in draft uh, editing we know that those are variables that are easier to spot. I have a second variable that's called PDF review. When I click on this, um, the difference is, is that we have background highlighter applied. And this is actually done from the, um, the character uh, format. And in this case, you know, the character format, for instance, over here, you can pick various background colors, and one of our colors is salmon. That's how that was, that was, that's how that was achieved. The final template, which is template 3, is when we're completely finished with the product, we want all of our variables to look normal and we just want them to go into sort of an italic style. So I'm going to apply all three, of, uh, all three of these just so you can see the various changes. So let's go back to our original document. And I'm actually going to go ahead and close uh, this pod. I don't need it at this point. <clears throat> so let's say at this point that I'm ready to start authoring, but I want to have our actual uh, client names from this first variable. So what we do from that first template is we simply change the name of the template that we're importing from. Notice that I'm not importing all of the values. You can select everything, turn it off, and just say character formats and variable definitions. I only need these two things. As soon as I do that, notice that the red text goes away, and instantly throughout our document, no matter how far down we go down, we can see that we've got the Zipperoo 5000, Elite Services, or Huge Gigantic Corporation. And if I were to go, if I were to go ahead and make any more changes to this text, in this case I'll just open up the variable pod to make it a little easier. Let's just say we wanted to add one more sentence. Uh, we are assured, you know, assured of the stability of, and here I wanted to put in the name of the, um, of the uh, company. 
So I can just do, actually I can just double click on it, and that will go ahead and put it in, and then put a period. So it's very easy to go ahead and author. Now this is what I might use for authoring purposes, and as I said, the reason I've deliberately formatted this into a bold uh, courier is so I don't get confused clicking on the text and having it turn black. Finally, when I'm ready to actually um, put this out for PDF review, um, because in PDF we can make comments and import them back into FrameMaker, I would go ahead and select my other template, which is template 2 for PDF review. Now watch how quick this is. Here we have the same names, the definitions are the same, but everywhere that we have a variable we've deliberately put a salmon background around it so that people can determine that that's text they don't need to make a notation on. So when somebody bring, opens up the PDF file, which I've just opened, they start to make comments, if they read, um, I'm to use yellow highlighter to indicate what I'm talking about. If they read this header up here, it says do not edit text with salmon background. Why is that? The reason is because we don't want somebody to go and change every instance of huge gigantic corporation. If they really wanted to change one, they could make a note. So now somebody could actually go ahead and insert some text here, you know, um, I could say that would really constitute and perhaps they may have some text that they want to uh, delete and that can be done with the strikeout annotation. When all of this is done we would go through steps shown in a previous uh, demonstration in which we would import our comments and annotations back into FrameMaker. Okay, so finally once all of the changes and edits are done and I think I'm through with my document, I would do one more template. Um, just taking a quick peek at it, this is our third template. I'll turn off the text symbols. And you can see that it basically just gives us our names and our definitions, and they're in italic, so it's going to look normal. So the last few moments of our demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and import my values from that third template and watch what happens now. There we go. As you can see, I've got um, a normal looking document, and I've got all of these instances of the elite service provider, the huge gigantic corporation, and the, whatever the product name is, I think it's the Zipper 5000. However, when we did our editing, we wanted that to stand out and look different so that we wouldn't accidentally select it. This concludes our brief demonstration and some best practices on working with user variables. And as you can see, this saves a tremendous amount of time, and it does not require require any programming or macros.